What's up guys, welcome to Just For The Tech Of It. I'm Drew Prindle and I will be bringing you weird and wild tech news from the fringes of the web. First up, let's talk about the Netherlands. So in an effort to combat this increasing problem of drones flying over places like airports and stadiums illegally, um, the police in the Netherlands are experimenting with a new eagle training program where they literally train these giant birds to take down unauthorized UAVs. So the Dutch National Police have actually partnered with a local raptor training company, which specializes in training large birds of prey like golden eagles and bald eagles. Now these birds have been trained to identify and attack drones and then land them in a safe place away from people in crowds so that they kind of minimize the risk of the things plummeting from the air and then injuring people below. It's definitely not a foolproof plan, but it's arguably a hell of a lot cheaper than some of the other approaches we've seen. The funny thing about this whole drone control problem is that like the approach that each country is taking to address the issue really kind of shows their true colors as a country, like who they are. Like the Dutch, for example, they use birds, it's this very elegant approach, whereas Japan uses bigger drones to attack smaller drones. In America, we developed like a, a shoulder-fired rifle that takes them down, probably the most American thing we could do. Australia is going to use boomerangs to take out drones, Russia is probably going to use surface-to-air missiles, and then Canada is going to use probably hockey sticks duct taped to moose and then they're gonna apologize after they do it. I'm sorry, Canada, that was, that you didn't deserve that. So really, this, this whole thing just reminds me of that story of when like NASA spent millions of dollars to develop the ballpoint pen so that astronauts could you know, write in zero gravity and then the Russians just used a pencil. This is pretty much the same thing, except instead of us using like millions of dollars to develop drones to take down other drones, the Dutch are just using birds. All right, moving on. So the next thing is 23andMe. Do you guys know what 23andMe is? It's the company that does basically mail order DNA testing. For 99 bucks, they will send you a test tube which you spit in and then you mail it back and they use fancy machinery to sequence your entire like DNA genome. It's pretty cool because with this information, they can tell you all kinds of stuff. They can tell you your ancestry, your ethnicity, and whether or not you're genetically predisposed for certain diseases. And the stuff that they're revealing is finally starting to roll out. One of the latest studies, which was actually published in the Journal of Current Biology this week, actually found that there are 15 specific genes associated with being a morning person. And this isn't just some small study. Over 89,000 people actually agreed to take part in this study, and the genetic correlations among these people suggest that your genes do in fact play a role in how early you typically get up every morning. It's crazy. The first thing I thought when I read this news was like, damn, I gotta get my DNA tested right away because that is probably the best excuse that you could possibly have for being late to work or school or anything. It's not my fault that I showed up to work at noon in pajamas. It's just because genetics. You can't fire me. I'm genetically predisposed to wearing pajamas to work. Check my 23andMe results, you'll see. It's not my fault I showed up to work naked. <laughs> All right, last but definitely not least, plants that can count. Recently reported in the publication Current Biology, a new study from Germany has actually proven that Venus flytraps have the ability to count, sort of. So let me back up. The way that a Venus flytrap works is that when a bug lands in the plant's jaws, it disturbs these little trigger hairs on the inside of the mouth. Each time a hair is disturbed, it sends a little electrical signal that travels through the plant's cells. And if enough of these hairs are triggered, the trap actually closes and then the plant excretes digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes, Ugh, it's hard to say. But the plant also doesn't want to expend too much energy because if it just opens and closes every time that a piece of dirt or water lands in it, then it would just be using too much energy. Scientists actually wanted to figure out how the plant avoided these false alarms. So they wired up a few plants with electrodes so that they could see the trigger process and action. What they found was that the plant actually has a very simple counting system built into it. In their experiments, they found that the trap will only close if more than two hairs are triggered in a span of about 20 seconds. And the plant will only excrete digestive enzymes if more than three hairs are triggered. Did I say enzymes right or did I mess it up again? <laughs> Enzymes. What's ridiculous about this isn't that the plant can count those specific impulses from the trigger hairs, but rather that it can count to 20 and reset if not enough hairs have been triggered in that span of time. Plants can count to 20, or Venus flytraps can count to 20. That's crazy. It's scary enough they're carnivorous, now they can count? I'm gonna start using this at parties when people try and brag to me about their kids. Like, oh, my kid can say da da, whoop de doo. I have a house plant that can count to 20. Give it a few more years of evolution and I bet my Venus flytrap will be able to make better macaroni art than your baby. That's it for this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more weird and wild tech news.